Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Records, wishing Mick Jagger a happy 80th birthday. Mick Jagger, of course, um, you know, just one of the great rock and roll frontmen, songwriters of the rock era, still going strong, still leading a Rolling Stones uh, group that is uh, really still playing stadiums and at the top of their game. Uh, Michael Philip Jagger was born on July 26th, 1943, in Dartford, Kent, England. He had a middle-class family. His father was a, a physical ed teacher and a gymnast. His mother was a hairdresser. Jagger says, I always sang as a kid. I was one of those kids who just liked to sing. Some kids sing in choirs. Others like to show off in front of the mirror. I was in the church choir and also... Uh, love listening to singers on the radio and the BBC. Um, he met uh, Keith Richards when he was seven. So in 1950, he meets Keith Richards in school. But that meeting is brief, and they really don't reconnect for about 12 years later. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Keith, uh, in the mid-50s, Mick has, you know, some garage bands, forms a band with... Uh, Dick Taylor, and they're playing Muddy Waters songs and Little Richard songs and Chuck Berry songs. Um, he reconvenes uh, with with Keith Richards um, standing waiting for, you know, a bus uh, in 1961. They say October of 1961. And Mick's got an armful of records Chuck Berry records and Muddy Water records, they realize that they both have a love for this music, this American music, blues music, rhythm and blues and rock and roll. They get a flat together with Brian Jones. Uh, that next year, July 12th of 1962, they perform for the first time as the Rolling Stones, without the G on the end, with the performation uh, Dick Taylor on bass, Brian Jones on guitar, Keith Richards on guitar, Ian Stewart on piano, Mick Jagger, of course, and Tony Chapman on drums. Chapman would be replaced, of course, um, by Charlie Watts, and Bill Wyman would replace Dick Taylor. Um, you know, over the next few years, you know, as the band progresses, Ian Stewart's less of a leader. Brian Jones is less of a leader because Mick Jagger and Keith Richards formed this musical partnership that they still have to this day, writing some of the great songs. They they uh, take take a Staples singer song from 1955, and they construct their first song, The Last Time, uh, based off of that song. It's a hit for them in 1964. In 1965, they, they write their first definitive classic, Satisfaction. Um, you know, they become the, the defiant troublemakers in an era where the lovable mop-top Beatles are king. They kind of became the, become the anti-Beatles, uh, rebellious. They're, they're having, they're getting busted with the drugs. Uh, the, the police in London are all over them. They are looking to bust these guys anytime they can. Albums like Out of Our Heads, Aftermath, and Between the Buttons, and aren't quite as successful as some of the Beatles of that mid-60s era. But by the time Beggar's Banquet comes out in 1968, with songs like Sympathy for the Devil and No Expectations, we're, we're really seeing this Jagger Richard things come to the forefront. In 1969, unfortunately, Brian Jones, the founding member, dies. Uh, he drowns in a swimming pool. Um, days after he's been asked to leave the band. Um, and, you know, really, um, that death and, and, and Mick Taylor being asked to join the band really sparks the, the great classic era of the band. You have the 1969 album, Let It Bleed, with Gimme Shelter, Monkey Man, I Can't Get No Satis... Uh, excuse me, uh, You Can't Always Get What You Want. They play uh, Hyde Park as their first show with King Crimson opening up in Blind Faith. Um, one of my buddy Colby's mother went to that show. Hyde Park for free. Altamont later that winter in 
uh, San Francisco or outside of San Francisco with Jefferson Airplane and Flying Burrito Brothers and um, The Grateful Dead, of course. And, of course, there's a murder during Sympathy for the Devil. Um, Get Your Yaya's out. Live album comes out in 1970. Sticky Fingers with Brown Sugar. Uh, Sway, Wild Horses, and Dead Flowers comes out in 71. Exile on Main Street comes out in 72 with Rocks Off, Tumbling Dice, Happy, and Loving Cup. Uh, Ronnie Wood joins the band in 75 after contributing on It's Only Rock and Roll, but I like it, in 1974. Um, Some Girls comes out with Shattered and Miss You in, in 78, followed by Tattoo You in 81 after emotional rescue in 80. You know, tattoo you, waiting on a friend and start me up. You know, the 80s sees Jagger doing some things on his own. Him and Keith aren't getting along as much. He does the Dancing in the Streets duet with David Bowie, which was, who knows why they did that, <laughs> but not, I'm sure they had a lot of fun doing it. I'm sure they're partying. She's the Boss comes out, his first solo album in 85. He performs at Live Aid by himself with the help of Tina Turner um, in 85. He does not perform with the Rolling Stones, and he's kind of solo here. Um, you know, Herbie Hancock plays on She's the Box. Jeff Beck plays on it. Nile Rogers plays on it. Um, in 87, Primitive Cool comes out. In 89, they are inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and they do reform that band it's the last band uh, album that bill wyman's on and it's steel wheels which has mixed emotions which is a big hit um wyman uh is replaced by daryl jones the 1994 uh, voodoo lounge tour comes out after his third solo album a uh, wandering spirit 93 um you know uh out of Tears was a great song off of the Voodoo Lounge. I saw them in Memphis with Blind Melon opening up at the Liberty Bowl. Uh, Bridges of Babylon comes out in 97. These are still good albums, you know? There's some good songs on that, including Saint of Me. And has anybody seen my baby? Um, you know, he's still writing with Keith and putting out this good material. Um, he's knighted by Queen Elizabeth II in 2003. A Bigger Bang comes out in 2005. I take my daughter, who's four years old, to see her first Stones concert on that tour. Rough Justice was a great song off that album. She knew every word, every song. Her favorite song was Paint It Black. Uh, 2016, you see Blue and Lonesome. Uh, they've sold over 240 million albums. Uh, he's the greatest front man, really, in rock and roll history, and rock history really in the greatest band in rock history that's been around for, you know, 61 years. The band's been around since 1962. It's really just kind of amazing to think of that. You know, he's the father of eight. He's a great uh, grandfather. He's a great grandfather. Uh, happy birthday, Mick. You are the best. Um, you know, have a great day, man. We'll hope to see you. Keep rocking until you're 90 to 100 and beyond. Check out my channel. Peace out. Be good. See you later.